This was shaping up to be a massive six-pointer of a Midlands derby for two teams that are striving for European football for next season. Aston Villa looking to secure top four. Maybe top five will be okay, but top four is what Aston Villa are shooting for. And Wolves definitely looking to finish seventh, but could they get into sixth? In the video today, we'll be reviewing Aston Villa versus Wolves to see exactly where the game was won and lost, who the standout performers were, and really what can both teams take out of this game moving forward at any point in the video today. If you do laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, trying a bit of a different format with how we're doing these review videos, um, then please do subscribe for more if you do enjoy it. Jump into the comment section down below with any thoughts or feedback, of course, and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and... Yeah, let's just get stuck straight into it. And as soon as the team sheets has came out, before a ball has even kicked, it does feel like 1-0 Aston Villa. There's a lot of question marks over these teams coming into the game, and the team sheets have revealed, unfortunately for Wolves, they have not managed to scramble Matias Cunha off the, fit, off the treatment table quick enough into this game. Some people thought he might have been 50-50 to start the game. He doesn't even make the bench today. And on top of that, to the absences that we knew about anyway, to Huang and Neto, there's no Craig Dawson today. So a rare Premier League appearance here for Santi Bueno in, in the back three here. And an attacking department of Doyle, Sarabia and Chweomi. I don't think was in the ideal situation for Wolves fans coming into this game. And the Aston Villa team was not going to be easy to predict. And, you know, what's came out is relatively being predictable, I suppose. Because as you see looking at the bench, Aston and Villa themselves don't have that strength and depth to be able to rotate their squad, particularly for this match. But the, the starting 11, tail of the tape, as it were, feels like Aston Villa have definitely got a better team together for this match. Now, I must confess, I don't know Chwe Wome. Chwe, Chwe Wome, Chwe Wome. I don't know this kid. I've never seen him play. But I'm quite convinced that Lamina, Jao Gomez, Tommy Doyle, and with Sarabia kind of dropping into pockets for support, is actually going to be one of Wolves' best things about their team coming into this match. Because... With Douglas Louise and Telemans in the engine room here with really Bailey and Rogers, they might tuck inside to make this kind of 4-2-2 shape, maybe, but they're not the same presence as we've seen from the likes of Ramsey, McGinn, even Boob Camera when he's come in here into the midfield four. So I do feel that there's maybe a little bit of midfield advantage here for Wolves if they can get any opportunities with these players because Jal Gomez has been on fire at the moment and he is really feeling it in, in a big derby match like this. You know, it's the guys that are going to be winning the ball, blocking challenges, cutting out passing lanes, and then the creative players that can, you know, open up the door, play a lovely ball through for the attackers on the transition that might win the day for Wolves if there's going to be anything. I think it could be a, a, de a decent shift for Nuri and Semedo because with Rodgers and Bailey out in the wide areas with Diaby and Watkins who are more than happy to, you know, overlap, each, um, like tuck over the pitch and then run in between channels on the other side of the, or either side of the pitch, really. It's going to ask a lot of questions of the whole back five here. And with the only win for this Wolves, Wolves team coming from Eight Nuri and Semedo, if Rodgers and Bailey can keep them, you know, I suppose Bailey and Diaby probably won't have too much problems over here, to be quite honest with you. But it's going to be more Rodgers, Semedo and Moreno out on this side here because Sarabia, you know, is probably going to drop into these areas here and ask some questions of this side of the pitch. Watkins is on fire at the moment and I think between Diaby, Bailey and Watkins, like there's going to be a lot of opportunities made between these three and, you know, Wolves do defend very well. I actually think they'll be quite good to keep this scoreline down today. I've still fallen in line with the prediction I made pre-match. But I do think Wolves are going to concede so many chances that a lot of averages kind of situational kick in. And Aston Villa are probably still going to get the goal. So I think coming into the game pre-match, seeing the lineups and the way the teams have shaped up, no real surprises with Aston Villa. Maybe seeing Rodgers starting, maybe rather than a... Maybe Ramsey could have made this game. Zaniolo's on the bench. And seeing Moreno starting over Dina, maybe there was some conversations to be had pre-match around that. But it's pretty much as expected for both teams. And I'm quite hopeful this kid's get good energy and good endeavour in them today. Because a derby match, especially if this guy's a local, you know, he might be the little wild card that might just make this game a bit more even than we maybe think coming into it. The last time these two teams played each other this season, it was an absolute bore fest for me. It was a bit of controversy, it was a one-each draw, but... Uh, I think this game is shaping up to be much more end-to-end. -end. This is a huge six-pointer for both, and both teams have set up the best way they can to attack. Having Tommy Doyle starting ahead of, really, Triori could have played in here. It's definitely a little bit more of an attacking lean to try and support, I think, the front two in this Wolf system. So I'm hoping we see 
a real entertaining derby in this one. This is how both teams stand on the table before kickoff. Wolves in 10th position on 41 points. Three points for them would put them level with West Ham ahead of Newcastle. Right on the coattails there to Man United. Nowhere near Aston Villa though, who are chasing down Spurs who picked up three points prior to this match. They're neck and neck on points today, so three points for Villa puts them back ahead of Spurs, back in the driving position, with Spurs obviously still with that game in hand. Wolves still do have, after this, a game in hand on West Ham, so you know they're actually in a really good position if they could get a very unexpected three points here today, whereas Aston Villa, it is more just about get fourth just in case fifth isn't Champions League. Sadly, through large parts of that first half, I was getting major deja vu of the first time these two teams faced off each other in the league. But really, for large parts of the first half, it must be said that Wolves have had, you know, the more positive sequences of play and have looked the more competent team. It looks like they've got a lot more energy when on the ball. And Aston Villa, although I've been in the, the Wolves box a couple of times, they've not really been creating guilt-edge opportunities and, you know, this game, although Aston Villa lead at the break 1-0, is one that is very, very evenly matched right across the pitch. With Lamina and Jao Gomez being able to come up here into this forward area and press along with uh, the youngster making his start today, Aston Villa have not had an easy time of it in terms of their build-up play and getting out of the back. I've been really impressed with Rodgers and his ability to travel with the ball from these kind of areas here quite often across the pitch and, you know, maybe it's been his end product, his final decision that's maybe a little bit off. He's won a few free kicks and such, which ultimately the goal score from a you know, rebound from a free kick, that sort of thing. So he's been pretty effective. I don't think Leon Bailey's really contributed too much. And we were thinking about coming into this game how Aston Villa might try and get some sort of foothold in the centre ground by making the kind of like the box in midfield. It's not been Bailey, it's actually been Diaby. Diaby's been dropping into this little pocket here with Rogers kind of floating into in between these zones here because Tommy Doyle has been all over the pitch getting touches of the ball everywhere and looking a real handful and looking like a real seasoned Premier League playmaker. You know, he's popping up in tight areas in defensive spaces and either playing long range passes and it's something like Semedo on the break or maybe even Sarabia to try and put Villa back into their own half get Wolves out of their half and when you know you've got the likes of Gomez and Lamina who are absolute athletes covering every blade of grass then you know Wolves like I said they've been a real handful Santi Bueno for me has been really impressive and right centre back as well there's been a lot of opportunities for him to carry the ball out and into these zones here his range of passing has been well seen and uh, very effective Kilman in the centre role more in the Dawson position has done quite good at sweeper and between him and Santi it is more of the the two in the back four with Totti maybe Roman a bit more sticking with Diaby or Watkins whoever has been a bit of trouble because we do see Eight Nuri quite often travelling really high up the pitch quite early on in the first half Douglas Louise was unlucky with an opportunity and he has been the kind of main man for Aston Villa in midfield when trying to get in transition themselves, get from one end of the pitch to the other. But really Aston Villa, you know, they do feel quite leggy in this game. They do feel like they're maybe in third gear at the moment, whereas Wolves definitely feel like they're in fifth gear, top gear. Uh, right from the first whistle here. So as soon as the goal goes in, Diaby gets a, an absolute screamer of a, a goal. Nice take from him, edge of the box, free hit. He doesn't make any mistakes, he finishes it off to give them a very slender lead coming into the break. But I do feel that, you know, Wolves are always a team that are really busy in the second half of games. And with the quality of chance that Eight Nuri's already missed, and with some of the kind of goal mouth opportunities that Sarabia and these other guys have been making and do make, you can kind of sense that Wolves are not out of this game yet. But Aston Villa have shown the quality when they do get into that final third, and Wolves can't really fall asleep for any for a minute they can't afford any of these kind of petulant free kicks as well on the counter attack because those yellow cards mount up makes it harder to do later in the match and also like we've seen with the Diaby goal Aston Villa very cool calm and organised really throughout this game even though Wolves do feel like they've got a better handle on the game you don't feel that Aston Villa feel out of their depth or really feel out of sorts at the moment so it's a bit of a chess match at the moment you know Wolves bringing all the energy and all the tempo and the unfortunate thing is when you look at the bench I don't see much support coming for the likes of Gomez, Lamina and Doyle in this engine room so they really need to get something for all their endeavour sooner rather than later because as these guys start to tire Sarabia's on a booking with Santi starting there's not really much depth in defence either you know so everything's quite knife edge for Wolves they're behind in this game and they need to get Jao Gomez and Lamina a little bit closer to each other and Tommy Doyle like I've mentioned is popping up in all areas across the pitch here but I wouldn't mind seeing him being allowed a bit more forward space in, in this kind of setup, particularly in the second half when they are now chasing the game they are now behind they will need to adapt 
because he's shown a nice bit of pace. He can read the game really well and he's very unselfish. So his involvement in the game and where he pops up will be good because Lamina's class, Jal Gomez's class, don't get me wrong, but Doyle seems to have a little bit more vision, a little bit more creativity. And Sarabia does offer you that, but when you're behind, you need more guys, you need more firepower. We could probably expect to see Eight Nuri come up and join the attack a lot more often as well, which maybe then means this defence maybe becomes a little bit more exposable for the likes of Diaby and Bailey. So yeah, it's going to be a real knife-edge second half. At Wolves definitely, uh, some, the ball's in their court. They need to come out and change the game to try and get something back out of the match. Sadly, that second half largely went the way we would expect it for Wolves without getting something significant in that opening 15 minutes or so of the second half, really the chances became even more scarce and Wolves didn't really have any chance of getting back into this. And really from the beginning of the second half, it did feel like Wolves really lost a lot of tempo and a lot of momentum and I was beginning to think to myself, it probably came at a very bad time for Wolves. They were in the ascendancy, they were getting momentum and then that little break and down the tunnel for a chat and all the rest of it definitely did take the steam out of the engine for them. The first half was 1-0 to Aston Villa and we just about got over 1xG. Like we mentioned at half time, it was a very tense, very... Uh, even affair. Second half, there was even less goal scoring opportunities across the match. Aston Villa, of course, getting another goal in the second half. Musa Diaby with a bit of a fluky assist, if you want to call it that, for Ezri Consa's, you know, fortuitous goal. And that's the sort of game that it was here. Two very evenly matched teams that are both really stretched really thin, spread really thin. They both had absolutely everything to play for. And sadly for Wolves, not getting anything from this game is going to be a real dent in their confidence in the pursuit for that top seven, top eight positions. Straight off the bat at half time, John Duran came on for Ollie Watkins and this may have gave Wales maybe a wee bit of, oh, no Ollie Watkins. I definitely know. I feel that with no Ollie Watkins on the pitch for Aston Villa, they're not as dangerous an attack and fair play to big JD here. He put himself about. He was a, a credible threat and, you know, he gave me a little bit of Lamina vibes in terms of what he was giving Aston Villa in that kind of attacking press. But really, no one got a handle on possession. Like we've seen with the statistics, the game overall, the possession was split right down the middle. Wills, in fact, slightly edge it out because it was just a constant battle through the middle of the pitch. And as the substitutes came on and diluted both teams, the quality definitely came out of it more so for Wolves and it really did, I uh, can't say enough, just became more and more of an uphill battle for them. And although Wolves in the first half definitely seemed to have more energy, more tempo, very quickly it started to change as the game went on and as I say some of the subs that were forced to come on came on. Which is probably the opposite for Aston Villa in this game because in the second half, right before getting that second goal, the double substitution of Lucas Dina bombing down this left-hand side along with Nicolo Zaniolo operating in this attacking playmaker area here really gave them something that they didn't have earlier in the match. I was impressed with Rodgers in this role in the first half but Zaniolo dripped drove, driven, carried the ball, driven up the pitch, carried the ball up the pitch with a bit more purpose, a bit more intensity. Rodgers was looking to get filled quite often if there wasn't an obvious avenue there, whereas Zaniolo has a bit more gale, has a bit more elite quality and experience. Uh, they got a little bit more out of him. But when we see Wolves take off 8 Nuri for Hugo Bueno, Tommy Doyle comes off for Chirawa, Semedo comes off for Doherty, with Traore and Fraser completing the Wolves substitutes. Wolves really did feel to throw the towel in a little bit here, go to damage limitation. And, you know, don't get me wrong, Fraser looked quite lively. Do you know all the subs? You know, Doherty kind of did what he does. Hugo Bueno, I don't think, was really a match for these guys. Bailey was kind of floating around a bit more in the second half as well. But these substitutions didn't add any wheels in any way at all just fresh legs fresh bodies on the pitch and it didn't really feel like anything was brought in that regard sadly for wheels they don't really have any other options they're kind of damned if they do damned if they don't they leave guys on the pitch and they break down further or they try and rest the guys that they do have except that they've lost this game they're 2-0 down away from home and carry on their merry way which for a, a derby you've got to admit is a bit of a pitiful result and Aston Villa should feel really buoyed from this. Ezri Consa, his goal really does kind of give him his just rewards for a lot of his performances in recent time. Obviously, he's had some international credentials recently. But honestly, box to box and everything else, I really do think throughout the second half, we've seen a lot more from Telemans and Douglas Louise maybe controlling the game a little bit more. There's a bit more confidence, a bit more power in attack. The Abbey coming off for Timmy right towards the end as well. Bailey came off to give somebody else a debut like right at the last kick. But this Aston Villa team, although kind of thin, John McGinn will be coming back from suspension. And hopefully with some of these injuries returning from the treatment room, this can be a springboard result for Aston Villa, which, you know, we're getting into a real pivotal chapter of their season. Next up is Man City, then Brentford, which is like whatever. Then a two-legged affair with Lille. Sammaged around a game with Arsenal before playing Bournemouth and then Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool in quick succession. If Aston Villa want to finish top four, want to finish top five, 
They're going to have to do it the hard way. And three massive points in the derby here will do them the world of good. Currently in four Fetty games played, 59 points is an amazing tally, an amazing total to be seeing at the moment. Sadly for Wolves, still in 10th on 41 points. Maybe the dream of getting into 7th, maybe even challenging 6th, is maybe going to be beyond their grasp. But with a game in hand, West Ham and Brighton still playing in European football. And if you'd seen the Newcastle game this weekend, their injury crisis is not getting any easier. The Wolves can definitely still hang on to the hope of qualifying for European football, but similar to Aston Villa, it's going to have to be done the hard way. Again, almost a bit of a non-event of this derby. It was quite a difficult watch as a neutral. It wasn't end-to-end -end exciting. It wasn't goals galore or anything anything like that but a really good chess match of football against two teams that like I said at the beginning have got a real good season on their hands and are both sets of fans both teams will be hoping to go on and you know really crown it off in style sadly Wolves won't be doing that with bragging rights from the derby that's down to the villa and I'll be watching Wolves really closely over April as well they've got six games they play Arsenal but outside of that you know West Ham when they've got European football commitments two of the less scary away trips in Burnley and Nottingham Forest at the beginning of the month before two decent home games to finish off April with Luton and Bournemouth so a very important month coming up for Wolves oh, not all hope is lost yet I hope you enjoyed this one guys on screen and now some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy if you did enjoy this content please do hit the subscribe button for more get into the comment section and let me know what you thought about the match stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one